and welcome to the first of our lessons for piano. Um, piano what? Piano appreciation. Piano uh, helping you uh, sign chords and whatever. The name of that tune was They Can't Take That Away From Me. My name is Roy Powell. Uh, that's the sort of music I play in nightclubs and uh, in nice all night bistros and places like that. And at the end of numbers like that, you get people will come to you, musicians if they happen to be in, and say, that was a nice chord, you played on the end. What was it? Well, it was a major seventh. There's the major seventh of E flat. The major seventh of E flat. Sometimes I resolve that to the sixth, like that. Put the sixth on. And the reason you do that is because it makes it pretty. It puts a sort of pretty end on. It's uh, it's nice. It's nice. Uh, during the course of these uh, these um, lessons, I would hope that you already know music or know a little bit of music, or you play by ear, or you play a little bit of music, but you <coughs> can't appreciate or you're not into the uh, more modern chords that which we're now using. Um, I've served an apprenticeship of many years to get where I am today. I played trad with the Apex Jazz Band years ago. I played rock for a while with Wee Willie and all sorts of other well-known names. I played skiffle with uh, Jazz McDevitt and nightclubs all over the world, just about. Uh, what, what I'm trying to teach, I'm not trying to teach you how to, look to, uh, to read music. I don't claim to do that. I do want you to appreciate the finer points of modern harmony and modern arranging and modern appreciation. Um, during the course of the lessons, you'll get notes which you can follow um, that tell you that some of them will be chord charts, some of them will be uh, exercises for you to do. In fact, this is a, an interesting note. And this one actually comes free with the first course. In fact, we give two copies away, so you can give a copy to a friend. And you can frame that, or you could, uh, I don't know, you could light your cigarette with it if you wanted to. <laughs> I don't care what you do with it. It's yours. That comes with the first course. Of course. Um, now, uh, you'll have to excuse the way I talk. I talk like a musician, because I am a musician. And I hope, before the end of this course, to turn you into a musician also, yourself. When we start with our first lesson, I've written on the sheet which you have with it, the first point is the ability to play any chord instantly. And I mean instantly. When I say G7, I expect you to play G7. Or there. That's called a different, the second inversion. Or there, called the third inversion. Or there. There's the seventh. I expect you to be able to play that instantly. I expect you to be able to play D seventh instantly. Right there. Can you see that? Yes, you can see that. Right, or E flat seventh up instantly. Or A minor instantly. A minor instantly. Or D diminished. They're also F diminished and also A flat diminished. And would you believe B natural diminished? Because it's the same chord. They're all the same chord. Diminished, there's a whole chapter on diminished shortly. I'm coming back to that in a minute. Uh, would I, should I say B minor? B minor with a seventh. B minor with a major seventh. With a major seventh and ninth. G flat. 
flat as it stands. It's very similar, isn't it, to B9, uh, B. It's similar to B major seventh with a flat ninth. With a ninth, sorry, the ordinary ninth. It's very similar. They're very similar. A lot of chords are very similar. Right now, item two. Item two, back up to here. And we say timing is all important. It is all important. It's very, very important. Learn to swing right from the beginning. Learn to swing. Whenever you do little exercises, try and count them. If you've got a metronome, so much the better. If you've got an organ in your house with one of these gadgets on that's an automatic drummer thing, switch it on. Play with it. Learn to swing. I know musicians who play very badly, but they swing. Chief, uh, chief offenders among uh, musicians who play badly are uh, perhaps trumpeters who occasionally crack some horrible notes, but when they're playing reasonably, they, they swing. What they're doing swings. Swinging is playing to a nice even it's it's uh, it's legato is the word that uh, is the actual word for it playing legato it should swing it should be nice it should fl flow next point scales are not boring and I stress that scales are not boring they are when you're a kid and you're made to made to uh, made to play scales, if I can just show you down here, uh, when you play scales, play them in tempo and have a little, uh, have, play a little game with yourself where you play a scale like that, A. Now you notice when I play it, every note has the same length, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 and 7 and 8, 1, 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 and 7 and 8, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 and 7 and 8. It's not necessary to play your left hand. I'm not making you into a concert pianist. Just, uh, just a better understanding of what you're doing. There's a Scottish scale of A. Scottish scale of B flat. every so often I make mistakes. I make mistakes because I'm not infallible. The only p uh, piano players that are infallible are people like Oscar Peterson and when I listen to Oscar Peterson I feel I should go back on the milk or work at some job like that instead because he, he's so perfect. So was Dave Brubeck when he was uh, popular. Dave Brubeck was so perfect he, he just made every other pianist feel inadequate. Uh, the most loved pianist uh, musician of all time was Louis Armstrong, who played some dreadful notes and made several mistakes. But trumpeters used to go home and think he missed that top, top E flat. I wonder, and they would go ta da, and play this top E flat, and they say, "My God, I can do it, and he can't." And it made them feel good. Now, you may not believe this, but sometimes I throw in mistakes on purpose, so that when you play it you can play it right and that way you can feel good. Or at least that's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> right now I'm going to play a couple of scales and I want you to play along with me. I don't want you to play along simultaneously with me. I just want you to play directly after me. Within the count, make it swing. This is how to, how to, uh, to use the scales to become fluid in every key. Become competent in every key, so no key is ever going to bother you because you can go blah, 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 and run off in that key. No problem. It's no problem. As soon as you become competent in that key, that key ceases to be a problem to you. Uh, I'll show you what I mean. One and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight. One and two and three and four. You two, three, four, two, two, three, four. You do it, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Two, three, four, two, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, two, two, three.
three, four. I'm cheating then. D. Now, I'm going to stop now because if you were playing the D where I asked you to play your turn, then I'll stop and then I'll give you a chance. Uh, on the last one, while you were playing, I was playing. It is possible to play scales that way if you want to play scales like this. Try that. Try that yourself. Play the third harmony. Learn what harmony is and what it, uh, it amounts to. That is harmony. We, we do this. We play scales in group therapy. In group therapy, it's, it's like... Um, it's a way of teaching music where you get several musicians playing several different instruments. Trumpet players, for instance, their, their uh, open key is B flat. Um, so they're happy in keys like B flat, F and E flat. Guitar players, their open key is E. So they're happy in E's and A's and D's. They're happy in those keys. Now, what works out hard for a trumpet player no, doesn't necessarily work out hard for a, um, a guitarist. What works out easy for a guitarist might, might be virtually impossible to a trumpet player. He'd say, oh, I can't play in those keys. I've never tried. But make him try. If you, if you have any friends that are musicians and can come in and share this experience with you, you get a tremendous kick out of working with each other. And, and you play it like we played at school. Keep the kettle boiling, keep the kettle... Any game which involved rhythm, that the minute one of you louses up on a chord, louses up on a, a phrase, like that. Uh, you, suppose you had a trumpeter with you and you're going... Dum -a -dum -a -dum -a -dum -a -dum and he goes... Dum -a -dum -a -dum -a -dum -a and he's forgotten how the tr fingering goes for that scale. So you all roar with laughter. Music is fun. It's got to be fun. If it's not fun, then you're doing it wrong and you shouldn't try to uh, try at all. You've got to have a laugh over it. It's, this is why I in, inject humour into everything I do. Everything I do, I cannot stand the musicians who are miserable sobs in the background. I could name you a dozen musicians in this country, real na top name musicians, uh, who are real, really miserable to be on a stand with. And these guys, you know, people just don't use them again. They, they're the ones that suffer, they don't get used on jobs anymore. One of the greatest of all time was Tubby Hayes. Tubby Hayes and I used to clown about something dreadful. We used to tap dance and do all sorts of things and play uh, and play silly phrases at each other. If I went, da, 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 Tubby would straight, be, straight away be there, da, 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 and, and echo me a little phrase in the background and, and all sorts of phrases like that. Uh, if If... Uh, while we're playing a minor tune, like Lullaby of Birdland, I went, Before I got that far, Tubby would have played, But nothing you dismay. Because he, he approached his music with a light heart. He, he, was, he, was, he was happy in what he was doing, and the happiness comes across. The happiness makes you swing, makes you relax. If you relax, you can swing. You can't swing if you've got to sit at attention and go... That doesn't swing. That does. That 
because I'm relaxing. The uh, people think uh, jazz and what I'm playing. When I'm playing these different chords, not the ones that are written around a tune, I don't do it just to prove I'm clever. I do it because they sound nice. I do it because it's jazz. The minute you stray away from the melody, you you you're uh, playing jazz. Constant Lambert once said that the definition of a jazz musician is an artist in his own right because he's creating as he goes along. Because we get a basic chord se sequence, that chord sequence might be 12 bars. Uh, 12 bar blues I'll come back up to in a later lesson. Uh, the 12 bar blues, and within the 12 bar blues, <laughs> slowed it down just to put an ending on it I kept it within tempo I wasn't slowing up in the middle and slowing speeding up or slowing down speeding up slowing down keep a thing within a tempo while you while you're playing be counting to yourself all the time eventually it'll start to swing for itself the next point I make point four which I've written down here is learn to write for yourself in other words if you ask me how do you play that 12 bar blues that I've just played? And I said, and I write you the chords in G. Don't be content. Incidentally, that 12 bar blues that I just played, I composed as I went along. In other words, I doubt if I could play it right at this very moment again and play it note for note. I don't, I never play the same thing note for note twice. So it's jazz. All I use is a chord sequence. If I wrote it for you into G, and said write it for yourself and you came back and played it for me in G in a week's time I wouldn't be happy I would be happy if you'd written it for, you, you it for yourself into C or D flat or any key now the next point I make there is point five. find out what C7 means this, this is there. instant recognition it's, the, it's, it's backtracking to the, the first uh, point, which is the ability to play any chord instantly. Find out what C7 means. When you're going to find that out, any minute, when we turn the page, that's what we're going to find out. What C7 means. Can you play an F diminished? I can. It sounds like that. Can you play a B flat uh, augmented? That's how you write B-flat augmented. I can. It sounds like that. And I can play A7. With one hand. Or two. And G minor ninth. Does that put you in mind of anything? Yes, it does. If you took it up a tone and called it A minor ninth, See, these are the these are the nice songs. They do say, and, and I've heard this said so many times. They don't write beautiful music like that anymore. It's 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 the fa it's a way of showing your age up. They don't write them like, like that anymore. But they do. They do. And, and later in this in this lesson, I'll show you that they do write songs like that. And they're writing them right at this moment. People like Jim Webber writing songs like that. People like John Lennon are writing songs like that. People like. Elton John are writing songs like that. Barry Manilow is. It's just that they're played in different tempos these days. Um, very few people realise that if you mess about with the tempo, uh, it is possible to completely alter a song, to give a song a completely different meaning, to alter the 
to alter the whole content of the song by giving it a different tempo. I'll give you, a, for instance, one of the most famous, for instances, of all time. This song is always played fast. All that time again. Now, very few people realise that that song was written as a love song. And if you think about it, it is to another tiger. <laughs> but you see what I mean? Actually, I could play Hold That Tiger for you and make it sound like a very pretty ballad. You don't believe me? Well, the beginning of Hold That Tiger goes like this. <laughs> Stop it at that moment and say, play it quietly. That puts me in mind of another song. Da, ba, da, they laugh at me and run. Don't laugh at me because I'm a fool. It's like the verse of don't laugh at me because I'm a fool. All of a sudden we've given a completely different meaning to a song by altering the tempo. This can be done with anything. Any song can be played in a different tempo and given a different feel by putting what I call the pretty chords in, by putting the modern chord in, in instead of the, and giving it a different feel. An example of this working in reverse is uh, if, for instance, if, for instance, we took the song My Way, which has chords like this. End is near. And so I reach the final curtain. My friends, I'll say it clear. I'll state my case, of which I'm certain. The tune was written like that. But how different it would sound if it had been published 40 years ago and played by, like, by George Formby. You'd, you'd get, and now the end is near, and so I reach the final curtain. My friends, I'll say it clear, I'll state my case of which I'm certain. Now, in this case, we've got, we're reversing the process and going back to basic chords. We're not putting these. That's the major seventh. That's the ordinary seventh. And this is C7, and that's F minor, F minor with a major 7th, B flat 7th, E flat major 7th. Take out all those major 7ths, all those minors, all those augmenteds, all those things, and take it back to its basic fundamental principles. And what have you got? You've got something which sounds like trap jazz. You could, you've altered the complete sound of it. I know it's daft and it's the basis of a comedy act virtually, but I know it's daft, but it's the reversal of what the, it's the reversal of what I'm trying to teach you. In other words, taking it back to its beginnings rather than keeping it with the nice chords. And it, it's um, it's uh, it's a shame that it, it it's the as I say the opposite of what I'm trying to get across. But it proves that by doing the opposite to, this, for every action there's a reaction. This is a simple uh, law of, of chemistry. Uh, so if you do a thing the opposite way around, if you take a song with simple chords and put the nice ones in, you're going to make a, a simple song into an even nicer song. Right, the last point on this page before I turn the page is point six. Learn the use of musical shorthand. Musical shorthand is like using that G minor ninth, meaning that small m means minor, a large m means major. 
ninth. We write ninth when actually we mean seventh and ninth. But we don't put the seventh in. Now sometimes when you see that you might think it would sound nicer with uh, a major seventh in. So try it. Nobody's going to fire you for try trying a chord because you think it might sound nicer. And if you're working with other guys, especially if you're working with other guys, and you find a nicer chord than the chord they're using, point it out to, the, to whoever's the band leader. Point it out and say, listen, this sounds nice, what do you think? And if he's got any musical ear at all, he's going to give it a listen. And he's going to say, yeah, that's nice, that. And you'll find that it's then in the repertoire. That's how it starts. This sign here, on this next line, this sign, two lines with two dots after it, means repeat. So this, at the beginning of a piece, means that we repeat all that happens until we come to this. At the end of the piece, this, at the beginning of the piece, means we, that we repeat all that happens until we come to the end of, to this, at the end of the piece. This, at the beginning of a piece, no, the uh, record hasn't stuck and we're going back to the same spot. It's me that's repeating that and that's exactly what it means. And by giving it in words of one syllable, I've demonstrated to you that as many, t that repeat, it just means repeat. That's all it means, repeat. We're going over the page now and going to the scale of C, which you have this sheet in your notes. In the scale of C, learn the names of all, all the notes within the scale of C. I've done it in the scale of C, and afterwards I want you to particularly go through and work it out in scales of your own. Now, uh, C is the root note or first. It's also the octave, but it's never mentioned as the octave, so it's the root note or first. I'll play it. You don't need to look at my fingers and play the note C. You play the note C with me now. C is the root note or first. D is the second or the ninth. Now, when I say a C ninth, you play and put the ninth up there at the top. And when I say E is the third or tenth, I'm afraid you were going to have to go down to the keyboard and follow this and you stick your sheet up in front of you as, you, as I'm saying this. E is the third. There's the third. One, two, three. E is the third. It's also the tenth. Now, you, don't, you very seldom get to play a tenth up there like that. But we do play them in the left hand here. The left hand use of the tenths is used in what they call the, the walking style or uh, yes stride piano because that little chord sequence I played then, every chord sequence, as you're playing them, should put you in mind of something. And this is how eventually you could learn to busk, because you learn to busk, because every phrase of every song ever written in the last century is, there are phrases of this, there are phrases of that, there might be two bars from Beethoven, there might be two bars, uh, a bar and a quarter of Misty. There might be uh, two bars out of What Kind of Fool Am I? Right in the middle of some other song and you think, oh, that just reminds me of that. And because of that, you'll remember that song. Now, remember it in terms of first, seconds and thirds on a chord. Uh, that E is the third. It's also the tenth. F is the fourth. It's seldom played within a chord, the fourth, unless it's referred to as a suspended fourth. And the eleventh is the same as the fourth. Uh, and a fourth is always used as a passing chord to get back to the third. I'll tell you a song that, that puts you in mind of there.
I've slowed that down for you so that you can follow that. Notice the D here with the other hand. When that's written in a chord like that, it's referred to as the suspended fourth. And it very, very resolves back to the third there. Or major chord, ordinary major chord. The fifth, I don't need to explain because it's within the major chord, it's within the minor chord. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. The fifth is, G is known as the fifth. Now, occasionally in a song you'll get asked for the flattened fifth, but we'll come back to that in a A is the sixth. One, two, three, four, five, six, and if you play the 6 within a chord of C, you get that. That's on the F, and that's back to the C6. tune, which is called the Woodchopper's Ball, the sixth. The next one is the seventh, which is referred to within a chord as the major seventh. That one. Now you never play that at the same time as you're playing the C. You leave the C out, and invariably when you play a major seventh, it's quite possible to get a... There's the tenth. There's the tenth. There's the ninth. On a clear day, right on the correct you. That chord is F7, by the way. On a clear day, C major 7. Right on the correct you, F7. There's the seventh of F. There's the ninth of F. major seventh with the ninth on. Now the C is called the octave. It's never quoted. They don't say right to play octave C. Uh, and it's left out if you're playing the ninth, which I've just explained. Or that ninth. That's the normal ninth as written. And that's the major seventh and ninth. Just to straighten that point out. Now, we go to the D flat. The D flat within a chord of C is referred to as the flattened ninth and is frequently played with the seventh. is E flat which is known as the minor third so it comes in all minor chords that's on G seventh I'm putting B on the bottom but it's actually G seventh so that's your minor third the next black note to be worried about is G flat, which isn't to worry about because it's the flattened fifth. I'm playing it with the seventh as well here. This is the seventh. There's your flattened fifth. Um, there's a lot of tunes being written on the flattened fifth. It's one of the blue notes. The blue notes are the notes which uh, you use in blues, like. Da -da 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 
That gives you a blue sound. E flat is a blue blue note within the C chord. You use these and slur them. That's your flat and fifth. The flat and fifth is the only perfect interval because G flat, flat and fifth. That one. And that is a lovely chord. That is G flat, flat and fifth. There's the seventh of G flat. There's the ninth of G flat. And this is the flat and fifth of G flat. This hand plays G flat, D flat, and B flat. But roll them if you can't stretch the ten. It's a lovely chord, is that? And um, uh, it's G flat, flat, and fifth is also C flat and fifth. from Leonard Bernstein, West Side Story. A flat is the sharpened fifth. It's written augmented. Aug, it's written A-U-G, augmented, or it's written as a plus sign, or it's written as sharpened fifth. Um, and I've written one out for you. C, E, A flat, C. That's your sharpened fifth there. Now work these out for yourself in that and other keys. The one I've not mentioned is B flat, with, which is the ordinary seventh, and it's very, very important is, is is the ordinary seventh because the ordinary seventh is the one that gets you to your next key. And the C seventh, if you play a C seventh, it gets you to F. Now C seventh is an unresolved chord. In other words, you can't finish a song on that. It always sounds like it's got to have that put on the end. Beethoven, the old fella, the old man Beethoven, was uh, driven crackers by his son who used to get up in the middle of the night and play unresolved chords like that. He would play that and then go back to bed. And then the old fella could not go to sleep until he came down the stairs and went and finished it off. And uh, another example of that is at the end of a tango, yeah. You finish a tango like that. There's the D7. Now you find that when you used, we used to play tangos in the old days of mecha dancing, when it was used to be strict ballroom tempos, and you finish a tango, you get half the audience would go and sing the odd note just to finish it off. They felt that it needed to be finished off. That's why at the bottom of the page I've put the words pom pom. Pom pom at the end. Pom pom. So you know what pom pom at the end means. That is I tiddly I tie. Pom pom. Here's another couple of pom poms that I'll leave you to finish on your own. Uh, put the pom on the end of this one. You sort that one out yourself. And this one. If you can't play the whole chord, at least put the note on, like that. Now, I did that fast so you wouldn't notice which one it was. But if you backtrack on the tape, you'll notice. But put a couple of, work a couple of pom-poms out for yourself, like the B-flat 7 one. Pom pom. Right, we're going over the page now and we're taking, we're finding out what chords consist of. On here I have, I have put uh, a chord consists of the root note, the third, the fifth, and the octave. Now you should know that actually. In this case I've written an F chord. Uh, and it's an stay stay with the stay with the uh, sheet for a minute. It's an F, it's an A, it's a C, and it's an F. That's a major chord. It can be played up there, and it can be played up there, and it can be played up there. Uh, minors are written, and I've written an A minor. A 
minor third, or flattened third, minor third. I've written A, C, E, A. I'm playing this right at this moment with my left hand and illustrating with this my right hand. Now, the seventh. The seventh consists of the root note, C in this case, C seventh, C, E, the fifth, the seventh. I've put a pair of glasses over that. Notice that one particularly. This is one of the most important ones you're going to use because very shortly I'm going to take you round the clock with the sevenths. And I don't mean rock around the clock, I mean we're going around the clock system of using the seven to get some other place. And also the octave. Uh, so you get that. Augmenteds are the root, the third, the sharpened fifth, and the top again, the octave again. So you've got root G, B, E flat, G, is a G augmented. Now you can play that in any position. You can play that up there, you can play it up there, and you can play it up there. Um, my watch has decided to fall off the piano. Very clever. Hmm. Uh, the next one is the sixth. Now I've just explained the sixth to you on the page before. The root E the third, the fifth, the sixth. Root E, third G sharp, fifth B natural, sixth is C sharp, and the octave is E. And it's played like that. And work out the other inversions yourself. The diminished is written with a little tiny round circle like that or the word D dim dim D-I-M diminished short for diminished so your chord is D dim consists of the D the F A flat B natural and D a third a flat a root flattened third flattened fifth sixth and octave and they're all a tone and a half apart, every one of them, but we'll come to that in a couple of minutes, how to find the diminished chords. The major seventh, written Maj7, or just with a large M like that, M7, it consists of the root, an F, the third, the fifth, and an E, which is the major seventh. When I love you, Porgy, me. You can stay on the keyboard with me now as we look for the ninth. Ninth, root, third, fifth, seventh, ninth. Now I just did that on the previous page when I said hello, 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 hello. That's a nice easy one. You've got to remember that the rest of your life. You can call that a Mr. and Mrs. Smith's chord if you like. You can call it what the hell you like, so long as you remember it. Now, the next one below that I have listed, and it's slightly printed off your sheet. Uh, we have it, I'm having a little bit of trouble with the printing machine here. Uh, but not to worry, because I'll say them out loud, and you can write them in yourself. Root, third, fifth, ordinary seventh, and ninth. This is C major 7th and 9th. On a clear day. We've already been through that one, haven't we, before? So we're backtracking all the time and cross-referencing, which is all, all good because it teaches you things and knocks it deep in and you'll never forget. And I'm now going over the page and you don't need to come up the page with me at all. Uh, you've got your page in front of you. We're on page 4 of this lesson. And we say a diminished chord is a chord consisting of a note exactly a tone and a half of notes exactly a tone and a half apart. One tone and a half. 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 
So therefore it's C, E flat, G flat, A and C. That is called C diminished. And it's written with a little circle after the C. That's C diminished. That is E flat diminished. And it's the same chord. And that's G flat diminished. And it's the same chord. And that is A diminished. And you sit, think to yourself, now where have I heard that before? It came in a, a popular country western song recorded by, of all people, the Mudlarks. And then he grabbed her. And then he tied her up. And then he put her on the chainsaw. And then, and then, and then, and then, uh uh, along came Jones. La da da ba da ba ba da tall thin Jones. Da 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 ba da ba da da. And so on. So that is a suspense chord. It's, it's used in horror films in the old days. So suspense, suspense, suspense. You know, entry of uh, Dracula coming down the long staircase sort of a deal. Um, now, the next diminished chord is this one, D flat dim, which is written D flat with a little circle after it. Work those out yourself. They go up like that. And then the next one is D. Now, if you move it up one movement, it becomes F diminished. If you move it up, it becomes A flat diminished, and so on. Learn the positions of them and note them. Incidentally, congratulations, you've just found the lost chord. What do I mean? Quite simple. It hasn't changed. Let's celebrate cause I'm feeling great. I'm the guy that found the lost chord. It hasn't changed. That is the chord that Jimmy Durante used in that, uh, that song. And I've put on the bottom of the page there, I've known trained and untrained musicians search for three minutes to find B, na B diminished. B diminished. Because they don't think of a B diminished as a D diminished. If they'd thought of it as a D diminished, they'd have known it was an A diminished. And if they'd known it was an A diminished, they'd have known it was F diminished. What's the matter with this piano? No apostrophes. Right now, we're going on to the, the ver a very important bit. This, this is sheet five, the circle. The circle is a way of working your way around C, one flat, two flats, three flats, four flats, five flats, six flats, seven flats, or five sharps, and working its way back again. And most chord sequences move around the circle clockwise. By adding a seventh to the chord of C major, we get to F. And add a seventh to F, and we move to B flat. Bach, Johann Sebastian Bach, used this method and come down to the keyboard and we'll go from the C7. C, there's the C, and the 7th. Brings you to a chord of F. F, and the 7th. B flat. There's the 7th. E flat. Now if you look at the circle on the on the chart there, you will find that I am going from one to the other. C seventh F seventh B flat seventh E flat seventh A flat seventh D flat 7th, G flat 7th, B 7th, E 7th, A 7th, D 7th, G 7th, C. Now if you want to impress a young lady, just play that for her like this. Now this is what I said, try it, it's fun.
somebody and they'll be convinced you can play Johann Sebastian Bach. And it isn't actually, it's an exercise to go around the, round the, um, round the circle. Once upon a time, tunes consisted of eight bar sequences. The first of which was played twice, i.e. in Blue Moon and several tunes of that ilk, and Somewhere Over the Rainbow and songs like that, with the bridge or middle eight to break up the monotony and reprising back to the first eight just to round it off. This was known as an A-A-A-B-A sequence. In other words, twice through the first sequence and through with a middle bit or B theme and back to the first bit. Uh, in Paris, a singer-songwriter by the name of Anatole wrote dozens of songs this way, using the same pattern all the time. As, in, as shown here, B flat, G minor, C minor, F7, B flat, G minor, C minor, F7, B flat, E, B flat 7, E flat, E flat minor, B flat, F7, B flat. Now if you repeat that, and then you go to the middle 8 and go D7, When George Gershwin came to Paris in the 1930s, they met, and so was born I Got Rhythm. In other words, George Gershwin uh, heard, it, heard all his songs, which were all alike, and thought, I'll use that, and he wrote I've Got Rhythm. Anatole wrote all his songs the same, so alike, but some fast, some slow, some sad, and some not so sad, and, and different keys. The musicians of the day loved him because any damn fool could play his music and if you change the key to G you could play along with the shadows. Hank Marvin used just the same sequence for Nivram. And it even had the same middle eight. Neil Sedak has used the idea at least eight million times, four of which have been co uh, become hits. That's a little bit of sarcasm creeping in, actually, because uh, Sedak has had many, many more than um, more than four hits. Uh, oh, Carol, oh, Carol, in which they extend each bar to in each chord to two bars. Don't ever leave me. And I'm so young and you're so old This my darling I've been told is exactly the same idea And uh, breaking up is hard to do is the same idea And the first four bars of for instance Don't it make my brown eyes blue Is the same idea So if you can play I've got rhythm And I've just given you the chord sequence to that On the page before You can play all these numbers you should be able to busk all these numbers. It, it's easy, and to work it out on the clock, all you do, backtracking to the clock for a minute, if you work it out on the clock, in the B-flat song, you move back for the middle eight to D, back to G, back to C, back to F. That's your middle eight. All you needed to know was the first note of the middle eight. And you knew how the middle eight went. The Anatole works out as B flat, backtrack to G minor, backtrack to F C, and back and come. In other words, you're going across there to come back there. In other words, on the middle eight, you're going across there to come back there. It's as simple as that. This is very very simple the way it works. Uh, old Royal Air Force expression when saluting an officer. Your arm goes up the, lo up the long way and down the short way. This is going out the short way and coming back the long way. Out the short way, come back the long way. For the Anatole, move back three notches and come back the long way. In other words, shoot to where you want to go to and come back the scenic route. 
I hope you understand that from that. Uh, now, on the next, uh, to finish off uh, my notes, brief notes on Anatole, I'm giving you a whole page of Anatoles on the next page, which I want you to practice in different keys. And I'll finish off the fairy story, which I started by saying, and so Anatole and Gershwin were married, and Cliff Richard got custody of Neil Sadaka. Uh, the next page is Anatole, and I've put at the top of the page here, until your fingers bleed. I put this on the uh, top for one of my pupils, and he said it was very apt. I've written it in four bars in C, the same four bars of the chord sequence, the f four bars in F, four bars in B flat, and from there on, I want you to write these in yourself. In the second lesson, I will actually come and go through a sheet full of corrections. I want you to fill all those in. I want you to practice your your, uh, your scales, and I want you to work these out yourself. And I'll correct them in the next lesson. Hope to see you soon. Ta-ta for now. I'm going to play you out with a few songs, which I'll just play. And I, as I play them, I'm going to recite the chord sequences. So if you want to work it out for yourself from what I'm doing, you can do. R reciting the chord sequences as I go along. I do this all the time. This to me is no great hardship at all. If I take this one, C, two, three, four, C, D7 flattened fifth, there's the flattened fifth, D minor, G7, C, Thank you. 